Hello, everyone. My name is Sophia Riker, and I have been researching the recumbent Lee, which is a monument to Confederate General Robert E. Lee that lies in the University Chapel at Washington and Lee University in Lexington, Virginia. Um, so the legend of Confederate General Robert E. Lee is central to lost cause mythology, which is a dominant belief system rooted in white supremacy and the distortion of Civil War history. The Lost Cause emerged as a way to transform the way that the Civil War was remembered in the wake of Confederate defeat. Confederate monuments, like that of the recumbently shown here, scatter across the American landscape and are emblems of this pervasive mythology. Despite Lee's distaste for fame and admiration during his life, he is the most highly commemorated Confederate, as well as the six most recorded individual in all US public monuments. And the recumbent is the first of these many monuments of Lee, yet it has never been altered or removed um, until very recently. Um, so Lee's legacy remains intimately connected to the recumbent statue, the chapel, and the university as a whole. Uh, a lot of this has to do with uh, Lee's history um, at Washington and Lee. Um, so Lee, was asked to be president of Washington College and served as president there until his death in 1870. He requested the funds to build the chapel and is said to have worshiped there every day. So his de dedication and connection to this building is sort of why he was buried there and why this statue was um, so adamantly desired to be put in the chapel. Um, this was much thanks to the Lee Memorial Association, which was created immediately after Lee's death um, as an attempt to, you know, create a monument to their, you know, fallen hero. Uh, so, however, this association was created mostly for fundraising efforts and planning efforts because um, the war-torn South post-Civil um, War did not have a lot of money. And so um, there were a lot of different fundraising efforts that took place. Um, shown here are some of the letters and souvenirs that were sent out to people who decided to donate. Um, so it was Southern elites, everyday people, um, larger don donors are really why this um, sculpture was able to, uh, I mean, this monument was able to be created. However, it was a very long process. Um, the person that was chose to sculpt it is Edward Valentine. Um, Edward Valentine is a Virginian who has had prior or prior experience uh, sculpting Lee. He was the only person to ever um, conduct proper facial measurements, um, and he created it thanks to the Lee Memorial Association, and his design was based on um, two royal tombs of Prussian uh, royalty, so uh, King Frederick Wilhelm III and Queen Louisa of Prussia were the tombs that um, the Lee Memorial Association and Lee's wife, Mary Lee, chose as the um, sort of what to base them off of. And this has a lot of implications if you were to look um, into the history of Prussia and the Prussian empire, as well as the history of the old South, there's a lot of similarities. However, the most important takeaway from this design decision is really just that Lee was deserving of a tomb fit for a king. Um, it's really this image of Southern royalty. Um, and that is really how he is, was um, imagined by many. Um, after this time, uh, you know, during this fundraising period, there was a lot of um, celebrations intended to uplift and celebrate Lee. Um, however, the most um, elaborate of that of those celebrations was really the unveiling of the recumbent figure that happened on June 28, 1883. Um, the estimates of a crowd is about 6,000 to 8,000 people that came out to witness the unveiling. Um, there's three orators, and really in this celebration, Lee is depicted as godlike, holy, flawless. Um, he's completely vindicated of all blame um, of anything that he could have, you know, done in the past. Um, so he really, through a lot of these words and these celebrations, he becomes the figurehead of this emerging lost cause. Um, mythology and these traits become associated with Lee um, and are really physically embodied in the recumbent statue and in the Lee Chapel. Um, but really over the years, not a lot changes in terms of the actual statue. However, much is added um, to the chapel. Uh, the rest of Lee's family is buried in the uh, crypt below. There's a museum that is refurbished year after year. There's renovations to the chapel that are made. Um, 
but really the, the figure remains steadfast. Um, it is a well-loved token of the chapel, the location, really as a, in a larger sense, the lost cause itself. Um, all of these artifacts and things that are added kind of creates this idea of a shrine to the lost cause and to Lee. Um, but, you know, the first sort of glimmer of moving away from this is in 2014, uh, the removal of the Confederate flags that surrounded the recumbent Lee for so long. Um, in 2014, they were removed because of protests by Black law students. Um, however, even that change really was a large deal, and the there were not larger changes until very recently. Um, so in the wake of racial violence um, and uh, Black Lives Matter protests across the country in 2020, there was a lot of calls to the university for changes. And so, um, oops. Um, <laughs> The Board of Trustees decided to rename the chapel from universe or from Lee Chapel to University Chapel. They discontinued Founders Day, which held was held on Lee's birthday. And they were also made the decision to physically separate the recumbent figure from the rest of the chapel. So where these flags are right here is going to be walled off. Um, however, that is not a decision that has been taken lightly by a large portion of the Washington and Lee community. Um, there's a counter movement right now that is a strong contingent of well-funded, organized and committed alumni donors and current students as well. Um, this is spearheaded by the General's Readout, um, which is a conservative organization dedicated to preservation and honoring Lee and Washington as well. Um, so although no, um, they've also, you know, made a, a petition, um, and there is, this is really a very current issue and it is gaining a lot of traction on the campus, but it really proves that, um, for many people, Lee is not just a man, but an idea. Um, he's a representation of a culture of honor, faith, Southern heritage, and ultimately the preservation of white supremacy. Um, so any threat to the statue, and the chapel itself acts as a threat to an entire belief system. Um, so although no changes have been made as a result of this counter movement, um, it definitely shows the dedication to um, preserving Lee and the image of him um, that is really so, um, you know, shown in this, in this image of him lying in the recumbent figure. Um, so hopefully the changes will continue to be made um, and they can really shape a new narrative that does not erase history, but instead sort of challenges us to think about it more honestly.